<laughs> oh, this is gonna be terrible, I can tell. Everyone's reaction is gonna be it's just gonna be so bad. Okay. So this is Apron Academy. <laughs> demo, demo. Uh, I remember when I used to think that I was so professional, and uh, this was, again, when, was it? When, when did I make this last? 2016! <laughs> the demo was made in 2016. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, yeah, um, Apron Academy is one where Yandere has voice role, and did. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, right here. Apron Academy credits. We have uh, me. Obviously, we have Monkiru, who is the artist for the sprites. Um, Andrew, um, and here Absidus, who is the, for the BG artist, um, Ren for the Chibis, which you'll see Chibis, um, and Conette for the parent, uh, parent strikes, um, music composition by Christopher Escalante. We have Alejandro Saab, uh, me, Momoki, aka Caitlin Myers, Brittany Lauda, uh, Rachel Mezer, Caitlin Barr, um, James Brown Jr., Yandere Dev, Hayden Davio, Nathan Sharp, and Jalen Cassell. Um, again, <laughs> is this an NSFW game? No. Ish. <laughs> It's one that I can play on stream. It's one that I can play on stream. Because <laughs> this is one, my fucking game. Um, and two, um, everything is censored. There is no extreme nudity. Um, there is no sex. Um, that is, if there is, like, a joke that, about nudity, but is it a lime? Yeah, is, is it, um, would it be lime-ish? I don't, I have to think about it. But I'm gonna let you guys, I'm gonna let you guys make the choices for me. Because I, I feel like you guys should make the choices for me. This is a demo, so it's not a full story. But it's, it's, it's... If you remember playing Made with Perfection, it's similar to that story. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome! That didn't fucking happen, Michaela. <laughs> oh my god, that, that, that didn't happen. Like, yep. Quick note, Tyler, our main character, has a voice. However, you can talk in the main character's voice by clicking that button. Thank you again for downloading this demo. <clears throat> Good day. Welcome to the story of Apron Academy. You will be viewing this story as young 24-year-old Tyler Schmidt. Now, please know that this game was created by Michaela Laws <laughs> using the Renpy <laughs> Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you enjoy this story. Thank you, Mr. James Brown Jr. I love James. He's fantastic. Um. Did you ever just sit down and think about your life? Where are you going with your life? Wh where you're going with your life and what are you going to do with it? I often thought about this every day in my bedroom. I would lay back in my bed and stare at the ceiling, wondering if where my life was going to go. I didn't have a job and I didn't really have a passion other than playing video games and relaxing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a moron by any means of the word. In fact, I graduated from a state university with a hefty bachelor's degree. The problem is that my life had a lack of drive to do anything with my degree. <laughs> it really wasn't about me being lazy, or, but more so of me not being motivated to find a career or job. There is a clear difference between laziness and a lack of motivation. At least, that's what I tell myself. Still, I can't say that my life is totally free of responsibility. I live in my parents' basement, doing house chores as a form of paying rent. Luckily, my parents didn't care that I didn't have a job, as long as I kept the house clean. At least that's what I thought. It was evening when it happened. I was passing through the living room to get food from the kitchen when my parents stopped me. Hold on there, Tyler. Hello, Yandere Dev. Sweetie, we need to talk. From the sound of their tones, the conversation we were about to have was going to be serious. I gulped quietly before turning back to the living room to see my parents on the couch, staring at me. Um, sure. What is it? Sit down, then we'll talk. Another sign. I was growing more nervous about what they had to say. I walked over to em the empty chair in the room and sat down, looking to them with curious but nervous eyes. All right. What is it? How long have you been out of college, Ty? Where was this coming from? My father helped pay for my college education, monitoring his debt like a hawk ever since. Why would he ask such a question? Uh, two years? A butt was coming. I felt it. And we're very proud that you graduated college. But... There it was. I mentally prepared myself for the boot, knowing it was coming. Were they finally sick of having a moocher son? Look, you need a job. We can't keep on spoiling you and letting you live here without some form of income. 
I thought me doing the household chores was payment for rent. Honey, we meant for you to get income for yourself. We don't mind the help around the house, but... Let's not sugarcoat this. You are an adult, and you need to start making money to eventually get a place of your own. There's just no way around this. So much for me taking my time. This wasn't exactly a fire in my heels, but the pressure of the idea became nerve-wracking. How was I supposed to find a job when I felt no motivation to do uh, motivation to? My degree definitely opened some doors, but would I even enjoy the work I went into? I didn't want to make my life a living hell for a job I wouldn't like. I looked at the floor between my feet and nodded an understanding. I knew there really wasn't anything I could do to fight back, so I just had to buckle down and figure out what I was going to do with my life. In a form of respect, or maybe condolence, my dad planted a hand on my shoulder and gave my body a soft shake. When he released me, I stood and went to the kitchen to get food before returning to my room. The weight of the situation pressed down on my shoulders like a boulder. I found myself questioning my path and wondering where the hell it was going to take me. Was I going to sink into an endless loop of mediocre and unwanted work? Fuck me. What am I going to do? I don't know, man. Fuck yourself! I put my food on my desk and slouched in my chair. This was turning out to be scarier than I thought. Still, I had to relax and think. What was I going to do? Hey guys, what are we going to do? <laughs> Shrug Lamau. So we're going to do a job hunting on the web. All right. That would be so fucking funny. As silly as the idea was, the internet had proven itself to be a great place for opportunity. Maybe there was a job available that allowed me to work from home. Maybe there was a job that would let me choose my own hours. The possibilities were endless when the medium was international. I raced through the webs of the in I wish the uh, I raced through the webs of the internet looking for quick jobs and careers in my degree's subject. However, because of the season, many jobs had already been filled with no sign of opening up. Choose NFT is it's the game over straight up. <laughs> I agree. You you make an NFT, you lose all your money, your parents kick you out, and you're now homeless. <laughs> That's the end of the game right there. Well, damn. My motivation was back at zero. How was I supposed to find anything when everything was taken? Even the menial and mundane jobs I found were filled. I shook my head and sighed, just closing out all the tabs I had opened and explored. I began to feel the slowly forming irritation in my mood and mind at the prospect of this. That's a sentence, Michaela. Throughout the evening, my mind continued to try and organize how I was going to achieve my goal, despite it being a goal I couldn't care less for. I ran through my usual social media and email checks and decided to wander through the sites mindlessly. What caught my eye was a conversation thread led by my parents on one of my social media sites. My son is finally going to get a job. Oh? Where will he be working? He's still job hunting now, but soon enough he'll find one. Doesn't he have a degree? I felt my eyebrow twitch in irritation at the conversation. Was I really such an important topic to mock publicly? I read on and on, reading over 50 comments and replies talking about me being a recluse, a moocher, and needing to get off my ass. So much for faith in your own son, Pomps. As I was about to close the window, a message popped up on the page from the site's messaging system. It was from my uncle, who, for who from what I remembered, was serving the military. Tyler, your father posted about you needing a job. I grimaced a bit slow, uncle. I messaged back, not wanting to be rude. Yeah, still looking. My uncle replied almost instantly, and what I read surprised me. It was like a, a blessed miracle being sent directly to me from a digital wave. I have a job for you. Interested? A job? My uncle was really offering me a job. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do, guys? What do we do? <laughs> also, the way that I made those pictures makes me irritated. <laughs> uh, because they're not aligned properly. Um, what's the job? Yes, please. What's the job? What's the job? Yes. Uh, I'm going to call Tyra Sam since I frankly can't stop thinking of Sam's voice. What's the job? Opal's still going. Oh, it's still going? Uh, let me go ahead and... up. Oh, it's just... It's, yeah, it's not going to be canceled for a while. Um, I'll do, okay, let's just do... What's the job? Just to save time. This one we won't pull. The next one we'll pull. Um, new poll? We'll do the next one as a new poll. So, what's the job? I became worried. My uncle was part of the military, after all. Who knows what he'd have me do? 
However, I didn't expect him to dance around the question as professional as he was. It's a job that will put a roof over your head and food on the table. I'll tell you more, if you want it. Really? I had to agree to it before knowing the details? I grew even more concerned about the job at hand. What if it was labor for the military? What if I had to be a labor guy for him? The guy was a military man. That already stuck the fear of God in me with images of a drill sergeant spitting and yelling in my face. I didn't want to sign up for a job that required my eardrums to be blown off or for someone to get in my face. Not for a moment, however. What if this was my only chance at a job? My options were limited and I needed to find something fast. And we're gonna go with yes, please, because if I'm good, thanks, that literally goes into a game over. Why? Because I made it turn into a game over. I was against the wall at this point. I needed to nab a job and fast, regardless of what it was. If it was something to get my parents off my back about it, then I would be fine. I'd find my motivation some other time. I quickly replied and waited. What was in store for me? Finally, my uncle replied. I will come over tomorrow with the details. Pack your things. Have a good night. Before I could reply, he went offline. I stared at my screen, rereading his message over and over to absorb what he had said. Pack my things? What the hell? I was moving out? Where was I going? What kind of job did my, bun my uncle have in mind? This was turning out to be ridiculous, but I had agreed. I had no choice in the matter anymore. But hey, at least I got a job. I signed off and leaned back in my chair, arcing my head over the top and staring at the ceiling. A dull hum covered my thoughts, sinking into the situation for a brief moment. This was going to be interesting. I took the remainder of the night packing before I could what I could before passing out. I woke up, though, the sound pounding of a fist slamming rapidly against my door. Tyler, get up. Grr, what? Your uncle's here, wanting to see you. Oh, fuck. I turned my head quickly to see the alarm, time of my alarm clock. 7.30 a.m. He was here already? I quickly jumped, practically vaulting out of bed, and got dressed into a set of clothes that I didn't pack. I didn't have time for a shower, but I didn't reek, so it didn't matter to me. I rushed to the door and opened it to see my dad staring at me. Watching the frustration in his eye melts to surprise as I said my mostly packed room somehow felt satisfying. I didn't tell him that I had gotten a job, and apparently neither did my uncle. You're all packed? Where are you going? Uncle Seymour got me a job. He told me to pack before he got here. My dad scanned my room, taking in the sight before he looked back to me and nodded. As he stepped back to give me space to exit my room, I mentally gave myself a high five. I made my way out of the, my room and walked to the front room, seeing my mother and my uncle sitting on the couches. So the moment I entered, spurred them to turn their head towards me. Hi, uncle. I looked at my uncle, surprised to see him not in military uniform, but in some sort of butler's outfit. That was the last thing I expected to see him in. And yes, you are not hallucinating. He is blinking. Yo. Good morning, Tyler. My uncle stood and looked me over before walking over and standing over me. He was a bit taller than me, so I had to look up at him. I felt a little intimidated being looked down upon. Um, Seymour? What are you? Before my mother could finish, my uncle began to circle my form like a vulture. I followed his body with my head and eyes as much as I could without turning my body. Why was he sizing me up? At last, he stopped in front of me and turned to my mother. I was just making sure Tyler was physically fit enough for the job I gave him last night. What? A job? What? Physically fit? That statement practically screamed that the job involved manual labor, making a part of my soul die a bit. I was going to regret this. I knew I was. My dad finally joined us and sat with my mother on the, other, on the couch as my uncle stood by my side. He had perfect posture with his hands clasped behind his back. I felt small and slouched, just standing next to him. He will be working for me until he figures out what he wishes to do as a true career. I plan to move him out immediately, if that is all right. My mother opened her mouth, most likely to protest, but my father placed a comforting but firm hand on her shoulder, stopping her. Tyler, are you sure about this? Oh, now he wanted to know if I was okay with this. I nodded, resolved in what I had agreed to do. I'm sure. Besides, you wanted me to get a job as soon as I could. I had to throw an extra jab at him before I left. My dad seemed to miss it, though, as he nodded and looked at my uncle. If he causes any trouble, 
I'm positive he won't. The work he will be doing will require complete discipline, which I'm sure Tyler has. I was genuinely surprised at my uncle. I really, he really thought I had potential? Maybe this job wouldn't be so bad after all, at least with him as my boss or manager. I got to say goodbye to my parents before packing my stuff into a moving truck that my uncle brought. More surprises. My entire room was cleaned out and I was out of the house. When I walked towards the truck to ride passenger, however, there were two men already in the seats. What the fuck? You'll be riding with me, Tyler. I looked at my uncle and almost let my jaw drop out of its sockets from the sight. In my driveway, hidden by the side of the house, was my uncle slowly easing out toward the streets in a luxury car. What the hell? My uncle waited and watched me from his rolled-down tinted window, most likely counting how long it took for me to wipe the surprise off of my face and finally get in. As I finally did, I began to make my way to the passenger seat. The back, Tyler. What? The, the back? The back. We don't have all day now. I grimaced. I wasn't a kid. Why did you want me to sit in the back seat? It was dumb. I rolled my eyes after closing them so my uncle wouldn't see my irritation as I made my way to the back seat door. I opened it and slid inside without a second thought, not noticing the large men in suits inside with my uncle. A hand, as a hand with a piece of cloth suddenly covered my mouth, my eyes shot open and looked around. Finally seeing the extra people in the car! Before I could thrash and protest, my mind suddenly began to feel fuzzy, and my eyes unwillingly closed. I could barely make out my uncle trying to speak to me as he rolled up his window. Relax. We'll be awake by the time we arrive. Then I became victim to the darkness of my mind. What was going on? Why did my uncle let men drug me? Where was he taking me? I was panicking, but only in my unconscious thoughts. I couldn't feel where we were going nor what was happening. I prayed every deity in the sky that I would make it out of the situation alive and unharmed. Finally, I was able to wake up. I was laying down on the very soft leather seat. I was staring up at the roof of a car. Was I still in that damn vehicle? Also, m props to me on misspelling. Um, my head was pounding violently, causing me to groan and cover my forehead with my hand. What the hell happened? I had a million questions running in my mind, but they only added to the pressure that was pulsating in my skull. You're awake. Right on time, too. Good. I turned my head I turned my head to my uncle's voice to see that I was inside of a limo, far away from the driver's seat and partition. The window had been rolled down so I could see my uncle staring at me, as if he had been waiting for me to finally shake off whatever drug he dosed me with. My rage flared at the sight of my uncle, and I rolled off the seat I was on, not caring about me slamming in onto the ground. I glared at my uncle, quickly readjusting myself despite the short height of the limo. What the hell? Why the fuck did you drug me? <laughs> Alejandro Sob is the best. I love. I, if there's any voice actor that I will always always give mad props to, that I will always, 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 always vouch for, no matter what, even on my deathbed, it's Alejandro Sob. Why? Because you can get him to say shit like this. Because <laughs> he will say he will he will voice act the hell out of anything you hand him. <laughs> My uncle seemed unfazed and simply got out of the car. I watched from the tinted windows as he walked around and opened the door out of the limo near me. I had to make sure you couldn't know where we were. I instantly stepped out of the car and stared dumbfounded at my uncle as he closed the door. I wasn't allowed to know where I was? What kind of job was I getting into? And the look on my uncle's face, however, hardened to something cold, which made a slight wave of fear rush down my spine. Was secrecy really, really important? This job is top secret government business. From here on in, you work for the government on a private project. The government is involved? Yes, so I expect you to do the best work you can. Understood? This was insane. This was truly an honesty insanity at its finest. I was drugged, practically kidnapped at this rate, and now I work for the government on a top secret mission project thing I had no knowledge about. This is turning out to be a marvelous first day of whatever the hell this job was. My uncle looked at his watch and sighed. 1 p.m. We're early. It was 1 o'clock already? I turned my head to look at the sky, wanting to see if the sun was in agreement with the time, but suddenly stopped as my eyes landed on the building we were parked in front of. Oh my god. We were parked in front of a mansion, standing at the steps of its front door. It was huge, and I felt incredibly small just measuring the size of it with my, with my gaze. 
My uncle made his way up the stairs, pushing, pausing halfway to look down at me. Come along now, don't gawk. I was going to work here? I followed, still taking in the sight of the building and not believing what I was doing and seeing. This had to have been a dream. There was no way I was stepping up to and most likely about to walk into a luxury mansion. As I reached the top, I stared at the front door as my uncle approached it. My uncle proceeded to remove one of his gloves and pressed his bare hand on one of the handles. The soft echo of a random cybernetic bl uh, the soft echo of random cybernetic blips trickled through the air in reply. <coughs> However, instead of the door opening, some sort of panel opened up beside it on the wall. My uncle fiddled with it, blocking it from my sight for about half a minute before the door finally let out a loud click sound. Interesting security system. My uncle took my uncle took hold of the doorknob and opened it, stepping in and making way for me to enter. I followed suit and became astounded by the sight of the interior. I was almost tempted to shout just to try to hear the echo. Holy crap, this place was amazing. As my uncle closed the front door, I examined the grand lobby from my spot. It was indeed huge, with two large staircases and white marble with gold and bronze accents. It took a moment for me to fully absorb the setting. I barely noticed my uncle stepping up beside me and looking around. He looked to his watch and noted it before muttering. Hmm. They must still be on their break. I looked to my uncle in confusion. Who were they? Ignoring my confused stare, my uncle nodded to me and patted my shoulder. Stay here, please. I want to make sure your room is ready for you. With that, my uncle climbed the stairs and vanished into the halls of the upper floor. I took the time to really take in the space, barely noticing the quickly building sound of running footsteps heading toward the lobby. As I finally did, the sound of wet feet slapping fo tile followed it. Both steps of noise is growing louder and closer to my location. Hold on a second. Uh, audio settings. Okay, everything is good. We're good. What the? <laughs> You'll never catch me, sugar tits. Tanya! <laughs> I could not believe what I was saying. A pair of girls dressed up in maid uniforms were rushing down the stairwell and bum rushing in my direction while looking over their shoulder. What made me almost completely red in the face was the woman that followed. Clad in only a towel, a third woman just chased after the sprinting pair. As her towel started to fall, however, she managed to nest her abnormally large breasts in an arm, most likely to help her continue the chase. Give me back my uniform! You gotta catch me first. Tanya, just give it back! Two more girls, also dressed in main uniforms, popped up at the top railing, watching the bout with very amused smirks, grins on their faces. The blonde laughed, gripping her stomach, as the brunette cupped her hands together to shout at the girls below. Run, bitch, run! This is too funny! <laughs> I froze in place, unable to make a sound from the sheer shock of the situation. The pair of girls ran towards me, one of them finally stopping at the side of me. The girl named Tanya, while noticing me, instead smirked and tossed the clothing she was holding at me. Catch, bro! D we're gonna catch it! I didn't need to be told twice, I stretched my arm towards a flying article and caught it, pulling it to my body. The smell of fresh detergent practically hit my senses like a wave as I held the outfit against me. However, maybe I shouldn't have caught it. The nude woman, whose towel was completely off of her body now, stopped in front of me and yanked the uniform from my arms with an almost insane strength. I was surprised it didn't rip. She passed it to the other woman who was standing still in shock of my presence. At least one of them seemed to care that a stranger was in the room. Nikki, hold this. Nikki did as requested of her, but she continued to stare at me, pressing her lips into a fine line. I was curious of whether or not the other four girls whether or not the other four girls would notice I was a stranger. The nude woman turned her head towards Tanya and pounced at her, finally ta catching her in a tackle. I am going to kill you! Within seconds, the nude woman was had tangled Tanya in some sort of martial arts wrestling pin down. As I stared, I winced at the direction Tanya's arms were positioned in. <laughs> hey, Haruka, ease up on her. She's fragile. <laughs> um, girls. Shut up, Corinne! Girls, get off of me! Oh, have you learned your lesson? Ladies! The girls and I quickly shot our heads towards the booming voice of my uncle. He was standing at the top of the staircase, glaring at Haruka and Tanya fiercely. The pair quickly separated with Tanya quickly stretching and cracking her limbs back into place. Haruka and Tanya then straightened up and stood at attention with Haruka clasping her arms over her breast and crotch, and Tanya with her hands clasped behind her back. The other three girls ran down towards them and stood at attention as well, mirroring Tanya. It may be your break time, 
But that does not mean you can wrestle in the lobby. Yes, sir! My uncle made his way down the stairs and grabbed Haruka's towel, tossing it at Haruka. Like lightning, Haruka wrapped it around herself and stood back at attention with her hands behind her back. And Tanya, another. If Haruka can't wear her uniform, she can't do her job. If she can't do her job, then her do- Give me a hot second. So you can hear James's beautiful voice. There we go. And Tanya, another prank. If Haruka can't wear her uniform, she can't do her job. If she can't do her job, then her duties will be ignored, adding more work for everyone else. Do you want to be demoted? No, sir! And say hello to the harem. <laughs> uh, from left to right, we have Haruka, Tanya, uh, oh my god, uh, Vic uh, Victoria, um, Oh, wait, no, that's not Victoria. Is it? No. Oh, my God. It's been so long. Um, then we have uh, Nikki and Corinne, but we have... I believe... Yeah, I believe that's... Yeah, wait. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Victoria. Get up. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's been forever. I'm so sorry. I walked around the girls and stared at them at my uncle's side. They were steadfast and at perfect attention to my uncle. I grew even more confused. What the hell was going on? I looked at my uncle as he continued to stare down the line of girls. I expect this not to happen again. Understood? Sir, yes, sir! My uncle nodded before looking to me. With a simple, with a smile, he placed a hand on my shoulder and turned back to the girls. Now, I would like you all to meet your new master. Wait. Master? I shot my head towards my uncle in utter shock, dra practically dropping my jaw. Master? Did he really say master? You want to run that by me again? I looked at the girls to see them staring at me in surprise. They were obviously shocked as well at this news. At least I wasn't the only one. My uncle, however, tightened his grip on my shoulder. It wasn't painful, but it definitely caught my attention. He forced my body around to fully square off the, the line of girls as he continued to speak. Yes, this is Master Tyler. He will be working with you all to ensure that each of you perfects your skill sets and are ready for promotion. The girls nodded, still looking to me as if they were, as they remained in their place. Over my thoughts, scrambled to try and figure to find some logical calm to this whole situation. When there was none to be found, I simply gulped and stared back at the girls before me. My uncle gave a hard pat on my shoulder before stepping forward towards the little women. Starting tomorrow, your duty is to see him as the master of the house. Make sure to treat him as you would your future employer. Understood? Yes, sir! At last, my uncle turned to me and gestured for me to step up to his side. I did obediently, unable to really speak anymore due to the sudden situation I was in. Ladies, introduce yourselves. One by one, each girl stepped forward and bowed before speaking. Hello, master. I am Corinne Barton. It will be my absolute honor to serve you. Please let me know of anything you need. Suck his dick, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Yeah. Him. Um, hi. I am Nikki Walters. It'll be a pleasure to serve you, Master. I'm sure. Hi, my name is Victoria Pollock. Yep, but Victoria. You I knew Victoria, it. Victoria, Master. Can't wait to serve you. Yo, name's Tanya Dewey. Hope to serve you well, Master. I am Haruka Ayume. It is a pleasure to meet you, Master. As Haruka stepped back, I ran my gaze over each girl, memorizing their names and faces. My uncle nodded and cleared his throat. Haruka, please get dressed. As it is not two o'clock yet, you all can continue enjoying your midday break. Once it is over, then please get back to your training and prepare dinner. The girls nodded in perfect unison before separating into different parts of the house. Before I could even think of curiously following any of them, my uncle turned to look at me. Now, you will be living here from now on. Meals are at 8 a.m. 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. and will be prepared by the young women you just met. Whoa, 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 hold on. Slow down, okay? Can't you at least explain what's going on first? I wanted a real explanation first. This was all coming out of the blue, and I needed some form of logical organization before I did anything. I didn't want to be thrown into the deep end so quickly. My uncle sighed and rubbed his temple before nodding. These women are training to be perfect bodyguards. 
They train as both military soldiers and maids in order to blend in with an upper-class noble lifestyle. That makes absolutely no sense. It's an experiment by the government to protect our national leaders from home assassination. These women are trained to not only serve their employers, but also protect them from anything that comes their way. That made a bit more sense. But they had to be maids in frilly maid outfits? That seemed ma- that seemed majorly Japanese anime-esque. That made no sense at all. As if my uncle read my mind, he crossed his arms. The maid uniform is part of their professional attire. They must know how to move and work diligently in them. But frilly maid outfits? You would be surprised how difficult it is to constantly work in one, especially if you are fighting off an attacker. This adds difficulty to their training. This... it wasn't a good reason, but I'll let it go. There was no re Yes, Michaela, you wrote that, and you accepted that, and you put that in your video game. It wasn't a good reason, but I let it go. There was no reason to question it any more than I already had. I, however, wasn't done. Alright, so I'm a master now. Yes, you are indeed the master of the house now. You may do whatever you like, such as use any of the facilities, or stay in your room and entertain yourself. Really? That's it? No. During scheduled times, you will be posed as a training dummy of sorts for the maids. Wait, what?! <laughs> I was a training dummy now?! I was getting lost again, but my uncle raised his hand up, calming me down. You will be participating in their focused training sessions so they can practice what it is like to protect a live person. You're safe in their hands, I promise. I grimaced. I wanted to believe him. But I became worried as to what these training sessions involved. My uncle looked at his watch and sighed again. And I am late for my meeting. Is there anything else you need? Well, what about the girls? Do I do anything with them? Like, order them around, or...? For a moment, his expression darkened to his old commander face, which made me freeze up and gulp silently. Wrong choice of words. You are free to ask anything of them, but you will not treat them like toys. They are women, and they are soldiers training for a purpose. Understand? Yes, sir. I really wasn't thinking anything of the sort. I just wanted clarification, but I guess my uncle had his own way of answering such questions. My uncle relaxed and clasped his hands behind his back. Now, I will be taking my leave. Because the maids are on break, make yourself some lunch. The kitchen is down the hall to the left. He began to walk towards the front door, hurried, uh, hurried to try and make up for lost time. Before he opened the door, however, he turned back to look at me. And I remind you, this is a top secret government experiment. You will not disclose your position to anyone. Understood? Yes, sir! I wasn't a dumbass. I knew I had to keep my mouth shut, especially on social media. My uncle nodded before bidding me farewell and leaving the mansion. I was now alone. This was beyond interesting, and I barely took everything in. I was a master of five maids who were soldiers. How the hell did I get this lucky? I thanked Lady Luck and every deity in the sky. Someone must have been watching over me. Not only did I get to relax, but I got to be in a house with five very attractive women. What could be better? My stomach, however, interrupted my thoughts. As it rumbled, yelling at me to get food, I laughed. Right. Lunch. I quickly made my way to the kitchen where two of the women were eating food of their own and having a conversation. Panya, you almost got me in trouble. <laughs> it's not my fault you love my jokes. <coughs> it wasn't even a funny joke, it was mean. I mean, so what? Corn's a bitch to me sometimes too, you know. As I finally stepped into the kitchen, the girls turned their heads to me. Oh, hey master. Did you need something? Oh, do you need lunch? Yeah, I haven't eaten all day. Oh no! Let me make you something, Master! Victoria rushed over to the large refrigerator and began to pull out ingredients while Tanya laughed and sipped her drink. Jesus Christ. Alright, and look! Chibis! Yeah, I got Chibis made for the um, options. Because um, I wanted this game not only to be played on PC, but also on mobiles. Um, so I wanted to make the buttons big, and I wanted to make sure that buttons could be pressed, um, and for choices to be made. So this was kind of my experiment of adding, like, cute little chibis to the buttons to make it more interactable in that way. Um, but yeah. Uh, so let's make a choice. Who are we going with, Victoria or Tanya? Alright, Victoria, we're gonna stop Victoria. Sounds good. 
I felt bad. She was supposedly on her break. She didn't have to work for my sake. Besides, I could make food for myself. I walked over and placed my hand on Victoria's shoulder, making her look back to me with a confused face. It's all right. You're on your break. I can make my own lunch. Oh, no, no, it's fine, Master. Besides, I was just going to make you a couple of sandwich... <laughs> <laughs> a snort that escaped Tanya's nose scared both me and Victoria, causing us to look over her as she could fall in her chair. I understood why, but I stopped myself from laughing a bit, a, a bit as well. <laughs> and why is it? Why is it that I laughed at my own joke? Why is it that I laughed at my own joke? <laughs> oh, that was a, such a terrible sexist joke. Um, Victoria shook her head and smiled at me. As I looked at her, I couldn't help but realize how adorable she was. She looked almost like a teenager, but if she was in the military, then she had to have been an adult. Michaela, if you ever come back to this, please rewrite this. This is not okay. You were such an ignorant child writing this sentence. Don't worry, Master. You'll get to enjoy my homemade potato chips and sandwiches. Ignoring the second snort that erupted from Tanya, Victoria turned back to the counter and began to somehow masterfully craft two perfect club sandwiches on a plate. I was salivating as Victoria opened up a chipboard, uh, the cupboard, cu chipboard, <laughs> opened up the cupboard and lifted up a bag of chips sealed by a clip. Opening it, I could smell the freshness of them. Holy crap, this is going to be an amazing lunch. I finally got the joke when she said it was sexist. It was a 100% a sexist joke. <laughs> it, was just like, it was a terrible fucking joke. I, I will admit, guys, 100%, I am a terrible fucking writer when I was back. Back then, I was a terrible fucking writer. I thought I could just, like, write whatever the fuck I wanted and just be okay with it. And now that I'm older and wiser and smarter, I'm, I'm looking back at this like, this is so fucking cringe. This is so fucking cringe. <laughs> like, holy shit. Um, I quickly turned and sat down at the table with Tanya, eagerly awaiting my food. Victoria turned from the counter with a plate in her hands. On it were two delicious-looking club sandwiches and a handful of what looked like kettle-cooked potato chips. She walked over and placed it in front of me with a smile. There we go. Enjoy. I stared at my plate for a second before digging in. My eyes were correct. The sandwiches were absolutely amazing as I let out a satisfied hum. Victoria clapped her hands and jumped in place happily. I'm so glad you like it, Master. The only she to achieve time travel to cancel her younger self! <laughs> <laughs> Tanya chuckled before enjoying her food. I consumed every last bite of my meal and sat back in my seat completely satisfied. If this was going to be how I was going to eat from now on, I couldn't wait to actually start being the master of the house. Tanya and Victoria excused themselves before I completely finished, leaving me alone in the kitchen. I took the moment to reflect on my situation. Master of the house. I would be fed seemingly amazingly f amazing food, and I would be able to do whatever I wanted. Well, save for the training sessions. Can I ban Younger Mickey for this writing? Yes. <laughs> I still had no clue what those would involve. This was either part of the soldier training, so something majorly physical, or their maid training, so housekeeping and stuff. Allow me, Master. Oh, by the way, here's the maid outfit for Haruka. And gee, I wonder who voices her. I almost jumped up in my chair at the surprise voice. I looked up to see Haruka leaning over to take my empty plate and Tanya's, which Tanya left behind. This was the first time I saw Haruka in her actual uniform. Haruka stacked the plates and walked over to the sink, washing them. As she did, I stared at her concentrated expression, remembering how we got acquainted with her in a towel and eventually nude. She knew I saw her naked, right? <laughs> <laughs> here's another quick here's another quick one are we gonna apologize or are we not gonna mention it are we going to ignore the elephant in the room <laughs> shall we ignore the elephant in the room <laughs> gentlemanly thing to do is apologize the funny thing to do is like, i like it cut g <laughs> oh my god that's terrible <laughs> oh my god all right looks like we're, we're saying sorry i had to apologize to her not that it was my fault but it was still an accident hey haruka yes master sorry about um well the incident earlier I saw. Hanukkah stopped washing the dishes and looked over to me in shock. Did, did did she not realize that I saw her naked? As she closed her eyes and giggled softly, I became a bit confused. Oh, that. Don't worry about it, Master. I had such a shit, Mike. Huh? But I... Saw me naked? I don't mind. Love, Mal. I felt blood rush into my head. Both of them. She didn't mind. How did she not mind? Women I knew would have thrown a fit for seeing them nude, but she didn't care. Haruka placed a freshly washed dishes on the drying rack beside her and turned around to me. You're not at fault for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. 
Anyone with a brain knows this. If you happen to walk in when I'm chasing down someone in a towel, it's not your fault if it slips completely off. There's no need to apologize for seeing me naked like that. If anything, just make sure you close your eyes next time, if it ever happens again. I rub the back of my neck, laughing slightly. <laughs> I guess you're right. You know what would be great for the remake? Get Brian involved? Yeah, absolutely! Big phrasing! I always try to be master. Finally, come and send one of these scenarios. With a nod, Haruka bowed and gestured to the exit of the kitchen. Come, master. I will show you to your room. Come. Do -do 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 do 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 Thank you. Right, I had no idea where my room was. Thanks, uncle. I walked towards the exit along with Haruka and she led me through the lobby and up the stairs. After a small journey through the hall, we finally stopped at a door. Here we are. Opening the door, however, Haruka revealed Corinne and Nikki unpacking the boxes and decorating the room with my stuff. My stuff came before me? Huh? Oh, hello. Hello, master. We were just moving your things in. We hope you don't mind. Oh, not at all. They were doing a pretty good job. They had set up my computer and consoles already and were already putting away my books and clothes. Less work for me. Nice. Hanukkah stepped into the room and joined the girls, and I looked around the room, taking in the size of it. It was indeed the master bedroom, furnished with a large desk, bed, and TV, and it was mine now. What could have been better? As Nikki placed a couple of books on the shelf, she turned to me. So, master, if I may ask... How do you know Seymour? Huh? Seymour? He's my uncle. Really? I thought he would be your father. You both look alike. Well, not everyone looks like their parents, Nikki. Anyways, how did you learn about this place? I remembered being kidnapped and drugged in a car before being remotely transported to a location I had no idea about. However, that wasn't the explanation I wanted to give. Oh, well, my uncle knew I needed a job, so he told me he had one for me. That's why I'm here, I guess. Did he tell you anything about the job? Not until after you all left the lobby. I apparently have to help you with your training sessions. I was still confused about what those involved. I figured it was best to ask the ones actually training, as my uncle wouldn't tell me. Nikki and Corinne nodded to me as Haruka continued to work. Corinne stopped her work to turn and face me, officially joining the conversation. When we're not taking care of the house, we train every other day. Our sessions include self-defense, stealth and infiltration, rescue, and basic medical practice. I stared, not believing what I was hearing. They really went through all of those subjects? I guess it makes sense, as they were soldiers training to be bodyguards, but to imagine them doing all of that in frilly maid uniforms made my head spin. They were pretty fun to do, as we used a body pillow to represent our master. But now that you're here, we'll have a better experience with it. Well, I'll be safe, right? Ren and Nikki nodded again, which eased my nerves. While my uncle expressed that I would be safe, it somehow felt better to hear that the people actually going through the training would ensure my safety. I barely noticed as Tanya and Victoria entered the room, hopping into the conversation fluidly. Well, somewhat safe, anyway. I don't think we can guarantee you'll come out each time unbruised. Tanya! I'm just saying, those paintball bullets hurt! Paintball bullets? Part of the training we do is making sure we can maneuver around obstacles, such as gunmen. It would be stupid to use real guns, so we use paintball guns instead. Victoria rubbed her shoulder with a grimace. They are pretty painful if you get pummeled with a volley of shots. As the nervousness I had about the ordeal came crawling back into my gut. Great! I guess it was just part of the price for relaxation and luxury. Tanya walked over and patted my shoulder with a smile. Don't worry, Master. We'll take care of you the best we can, alright? You can count on us, Master. Looking at all five girls as Haruka turned to nod in agreement with Corinne's and Tanya's statements, I could see the confidence in their eyes. They'd make sure I was taken care of. I found myself becoming more curious at what these girls did. Why were they here and why trained to be a maid as well as a soldier? Was it a matter of pride? Of duty? I didn't know anyone who would accept this kind of training. And then again, I wasn't them. I didn't know what was going on in their heads. I was simply their master. Before I knew it, a large gong rang through the mansion. It wasn't deafening, but it definitely caught everyone's attention. The girls, in response, looked at the clock on the wall. 2 p.m. Break time was over for them. Not that many of them had actually utilized their break. The only one I didn't see working was Tanya. 
I guess you all have to get back to work officially? Yes, Master. We have to make sure the house is clean and in order. It's a large mansion after all. At least we stay on top of it every other day, so dust doesn't collect too much. Wait, who's going to prepare dinner tonight? I can't remember who's scheduled for today. Nikki and Corinne raised their hands, but looked at each other in surprise. Were both of them scheduled to cook? Well, we can't have two dinners. Which one of you is going to do it? Why don't we let Master decide? He'll be eating it as well, after all. The girls turned to me, and I suddenly felt a little nervous. This is my first order, but which girl to choose? Master, for tonight, I'd like to make herb pork chops with a fresh raspberry sauce, paired with mashed potatoes and broccoli. I, however, would like to make crab-stuffed lobster tails with freshly baked dinner rolls tonight, if you would allow me to. Both options sounded really good, and both girls seemed to really want to be chosen, just from the look in their eyes. I looked back and forth between both girls, trying to decide. I let my instinct guide my answer. Which one? Oh my god, those cheese are so cute! Oh, so, so cute. This is hard. I'm hungry right now, so don't ask me shit. <laughs> Alright, let's get a poll up. Let's get a poll up. But why not both? We can't have two dinners. Tanya says we cannot have two dinners. <laughs> that is not possible. Alright, looks like we're going with Nikki. Nikki smiled and bowed to me before rushing out of the room, most likely to pre start preparing and making sure dinner would go smoothly. Corinne, on the other hand, pressed her lips together and crossed her arms, scowling a bit at the ground by my feet before joining Haruka in her work. The girls eventually all excused themselves, finishing with unpacking my stuff and going off to check on the rest of the house. Now that I was alone, I took a deeper look at my room. It was much larger than my old room, and something told me that I would spend a lot of my time in here. At least I had my computer and books. Maybe in this new place. I'll figure out what I want to do. The more I thought about it, the more realistic the idea became. It was a new environment with a lot of things would happen here. I'd get a fresh start on finding some sort of motivation while with the girls. This is good. This is a really good thing. I practically flopped into my bed and taking everything in. The mattress was like a cloud. My mind began to organize everything on its own. Each girl became part of my memory and I would open up more room to learn more about them in the place I was in. Where would I go with this? What happened while I was here? I was about to get an experience of a lifetime, all because I needed a job. I was one lucky man. For now, though, I was allowed to relax. We have a lead, sir. Report. We found some suspicious activity from a man named Tyler Schmidt. According to his messaging record, his uncle offered him a job. What makes this Tyler Schmidt so special? This uncle is Corporal Seymour Stark, the one we think is behind Operation Apron. Tyler Schmidt, huh? Are you sure he's the one? Positive, sir. He was relocated this morning somewhere we can't track yet. What should we do? We need to find this Tyler Schmidt and capture him. Once we do, we'll bleed him dry of every little detail about this Operation Apron. The United States thinks they can hide a secret weapon, eh? Ha! <laughs> we'll see about that. I love working with so many cool people. I love working with so many cool people. And that's the game. Yeah! And if you actually go with certain routes, you can actually see the girls show up in the demo screen. So you have Haruka, Nikki, and Victoria. Um, obviously, if you picked for and Tanya. Yeah. If you didn't apologize, Haruka wouldn't show up. Um, but yeah, so why is Groovy? <laughs> uh, special appearance? <laughs> it's not Groovy though. I promise it's not Groovy. Um, but yeah, so oh my god. Holy wow. That was a memory lane. That took me back. That, that really took me back in time. Like, what the hell? Holy crap. That happened. That really happened. <laughs>